Hey folks, LTZ here. I know another video just right after the other one, which was on magical resistance and divine embodiment. And I'm calling this one, congratulations, you found the goddess. Now what? <laughs> and uh, I'm only partially kidding. No, no, I mean, it's just a very serious thing. And perhaps, you know, perhaps you in the last week um, or within the last several months have recently become aware of goddess energy, um, that there's other concepts out there besides perhaps the religion that you were raised with, you are new to witchcraft, um, all of the things, right? Um, which is wonderful. Yay! I, I love that for you. And <laughs> I mean that sincerely, like that's, that's wonderful. Um, I also love that many of you are very much interested in tapping into magical resistance. So I want to bring those two things together in a way that hopefully will smooth your role uh, because there's a lot of misinformation out there and when we are super enthusiastic about an idea that's new to us, we tend to miss some red flags, um, even a parade, uh, just a couple there could be a parade out there and I would like you to avoid the parade of red flags. So in the previous video, I talked about the embodied divine and part of that language uh, of the post I read was, all right, folks are discovering what they're calling the divine feminine, the feminine divine. Here's another concept instead to explore. Um, and I didn't mean that you should abandon this idea and it's not worth anything. I, as a witch who is focused on your body as your most important magical tool and a very active in magical resistance, suggesting the idea of the internalized divine versus the externalized divine. <gasps> what does that mean? So it is a radical concept to see yourself as a human being as containing divine essence. Okay. Not so much in the realm of witchcraft, or like, yes, yes, we know that. And, and possibly, you know, there are other religions and spiritual practices that see that too, but in the dominant overculture, not so much, right? We're told that the body is sinful, the body is evil, um, and that everything we do, we should just pretty much do it for the next life instead of right here and now, right? That's, that's a whole thing. That's a whole other video too, right? And why I'm focusing on the internalized divine as your kind of your first major stepping stone for magical resistance work is when you recognize the divine within yourself, in your body, and see your body as an incredible experience. You are a spiritual being having a physical human experience. It helps us see all the other humans around us, regardless of their religion, the color of their skin, their size, their age, their ability, gender, all of those things, we have a awakening of, my God, look at this, look at this amazingness. And that helps bolster what we're doing in our, our magical resistance work. And we'll get back to that too. Um, externalized divine is a very important concept too, and that is being able to see gods, goddesses who reflect who we are, right? To see the divine outside of us, which is a huge part of my work too. Um, if you don't know, if you don't know, if you're all new here, I'm an artist and I have been creating deity images now for over 30 years. And I am deeply inspired by the diversity of the divine um, and that is a wide range of gods and goddesses uh, and mythical explorations of that in all kinds of bodies and colors and genders and all of that. that. That is so deeply inspiring and important work to me because I do recognize that you know, when I'm at a show and people see a goddess that looks like them or a god that looks like them, it is magical and transformative and so, so very empowering. So those are important concepts. Now, one of the things that can get a little in there is, well, let's face it, feminine and masculine 
those are loaded terms and they they definitely can give us a grounding point and a talking point too and you know people can argue all day <laughs> about them so you want you want to call something the feminine divine the masculine divine the the non-binary divine um great right that's what those are we're talking about external concepts right to see the gods right in the world and see parts of ourselves reflected in them right we see the gods outside of ourselves versus seeing the god within right the god within that is a big big idea and uh, apparently getting me in trouble in some circles of the internet and i'm not mad about it because <laughs> this is what i believe and know to be true in all of the wonderful beautiful diverse people i see around me um because you're all you're human beings um, and your body, your body is a magical place. Um, it's also weird and does strange things. And if you've read Anatomy of Witch, you also know my opinion on, on the body, right? So it's first, as I said, the concept of the internalized divine to start here as your foundation versus the externalized divine, which is also why in when I'm teaching witchcraft, the idea of gods and goddesses and spirits and ancestors they tend to be a little further down the line. Um, technically, ancestors can start with the, the root work that you're doing. But to first figure out you, to first find you, and then is it important to incorporate these other ideas into your practices? Because there have been so many books for so many decades that pretty much are like, well, chapter one, you're a witch. Chapter two, pick a god and a goddess, right? <laughs> and it's like, well, wait, wait, wait. What about, what about all the other things that, that get you there? Um, and you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm a weirdo for, for thinking that way, but it's been very, very effective for me and for so many people that I've worked with. So that is, that is my position on that. Now, what I do worry about, and I mentioned that parade of red flags when it comes to the divine feminine, uh, cause again, this is stuff I've been exploring now for a very, very long time. And I know that there's a lot of problematic texts um, and positions out there that are very exclusive um, and possibly damaging to both, <laughs> including two cisgendered women, not just folks who exist outside of the binary spectrum to trans women and all, all of those things, right? Um, <laughs> There is an Ouroboros or an Arabaris here that can get um, spicy, to say the least. And what, what do I mean by that? So, so much of the work of the 60s, 70s, and 80s when it comes to goddess religions is um, a lot of archaeological evidence and exploration and going into folklore and myth, and also a lot of wish lore or fake lore, if you will. But I'm going to go lean on the, the idea of wish lore. Um, that, you know, there was a great matriarchal society, there was the all goddess, there are all these things, and we don't really quite have so much evidence of that. Um, though it's, it's lovely, like, we had a wonderful, peaceful society. And then you look at human beings and you're like, maybe not so much, because we keep doing the same things over and over again. Uh, so it's, it's a beautiful concept, and it is true that a lot of matriarchal societies tend to be more peaceful. Um, but there's also societies that aren't matriarchal or patriarchal. They're simply balanced and they're doing great um, in their own little pockets of the world. <laughs> so, different story, right? So part of that kind of awakening of the, the bringing back the goddess, so goddess has always been here. It's just a matter of recognition and, and seeing and you know, awakening in that sense is there is a kind of slippery slope where it goes from the goddess out here to your reproductive organs are magical. Well, technically all your organs are magical. <laughs> and when we, it is great to honor that because the, it has been dishonored in so many ways, though I also, you know, if you've been here before, you know that I also say like both death and birth have been dishonored in so many ways. So like out of all the life processes, regardless of gender, have been fucked around with um, by the modern society <laughs> in the last several hundred years. So what 
it's great to find empowerment in those aspects of yourself, but it's also important not to link your identity to those because it does become this circle. Um, I was somewhere in the last week where a friend was talking, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I forget who it was, but I've been a lot of places the last week, and obviously a little bit of stress has eroded <laughs> who and what. But they said, you know, I was exploring this concept, I went down a rabbit hole, and I thought it was really like really leftist and kind of really cool and extreme, and then ended back up on like QAnon side of things, and like, whoa! Wow, it's this little thing, especially within New Age and the conspiratorial things. It's like, ah, ah, ooh, right? <laughs> Just like that. That's scientific. Wah, scientific term. So, and that, this is not a new thing. I've also been writing about this for quite a while, is when we go into the branch of saying, ah, women's bodies are the most important bodies out there, and we give birth and we do these things, it also leaves out a huge chunk of women who are unable to give birth, who are unable to conceive, those who've had hysterectomies. Um, they're also pinning our importance on whether or not we're able to, you know, generate a cycle. As someone who has PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, I have a whole lot of thoughts on, on that too. So that can be a thing, right? And when we're talking about reproductive rights and we're like, well, this is all sacred and this is all very special, there's a point where you're going from, rah, we have to you know, protect our reproductive rights to, well, if birth and women giving birth is really important, we have to keep that sacred. And then you're on the other side of that where, no, you should never have an abortion and, you know, all of these, like, anything to prevent birth is wrong. Like, it, it's... It is a scary truth, right? That you can just keep, keep going boom, over here. And that's where I'm like, mm, that's not to me about the, the divine feminine. Uh, but that's where I, when I see folks getting like really upset about reproductive rights and kind of being like, ah, the feminine rage of divine angst. <laughs> divine angst, that's a new one. It sounds very gothy, doesn't it? Divine angst. Next, next video, divine angst. With eyeliner. It'll be great. <laughs> so coming back to my point, um, yes there's a point, right, is if you want to explore the divine feminine, that is fantastic. That's great. Um, be careful that when it gets very gender essentialist or gender supremacist, um, that's saying that your parts are more important than the whole of you, it can get a little wrong. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. Um, and that's why there's also been a lot of consideration of, you know, the maiden, mother, and crone concept is not an ancient concept. Uh, we're gonna go back to Robert Graves and the White Goddess. Um, look it up, right? That is not an ancient pagan concept. You can look into all sorts of mythology and not see that present. Uh, so, you know, this whole thing, you have to fit into these neat little boxes also doesn't include a whole lot of folks, regardless of your gender, whether you are a cisgendered woman, trans woman, a man, non-binary, intersexed, all of those things. Um, you're a human being. <laughs> you are divinely embodied. Ah, see? Boom. Again, not either. If you want to explore, great. But when you're running into that super hyper focus on those reproductive abilities and making those the whole of your being, um, it, it can get into a place where you are devaluing yourself and you're devaluing others. I know I probably just pissed off so many people with that, but it's true. You, you are more than the sum of your parts. I say that again, you are more than the sum of your parts. Um, and that is why Yes, explore gods, goddesses, everything out there that you want. But again, here's a different concept that is internalized for you sorting your path out. So uh, also about that, while I'm here, while I'm here, while I'm here, um, why I'm going to come back to intersectionality, right, inclusiveness, uh, when it comes to reproductive rights is um, there are a lot of people 
in certain demographics who are kind of just discovering the um, audacities <laughs> and the rage of losing rights that they had, right? Um, and then you need to dig a little deeper into history and see about the forced sterilization of black women and indigenous women in this country. Um, so knowing that their reproductive rights have been violated for a very, very long time, the consent over their own bodies. So autonomy is huge and it goes across color, gender, right? It goes across if you're, you know, not seen as viable by society that you should not be able to reproduce as well. It gets really heavy and all intertwined. There's also it doesn't take much to realize that misogyny and transphobia are two sides of the same coin uh, in many, many different ways, right? Uh, so do a little research into that. Now, the other thing about working with goddesses or wanting to discover the goddess in whatever form, right, is also an exercise in cultural exploration and folkloric exploration, mythology, and getting to know these deities just because you're like, oh, I heard, I heard Medusa is good for this. Take some time. Do your research. Read the myths. Read the stories. Connect before you are just going, ah, I'm going to pull, pull this goddess because I hear, you know, they're a rage goddess. Um, you need to see the context with their, what they're in. Uh, there's a lot of folks who kind of pass on this fake lore too that you know all these societies that had goddesses obviously revered women and that's not true right take a look at greek and roman culture um and then any other handful of ones like of course some of them yes but a whole bunch of them seeing the divine feminine did not mean seeing the divine embodied in the people right that is an important thing to recognize so I'm not about recreating the past. I'm saying, how do we do this better? How do we connect more deeply? And another great thing about, <laughs> but wait, there's more. Another great thing about centering the divine within yourself is there's less colonization to deconstruct in there. Uh, pretty much what you are deconstructing is what, what you've been taught in your own society and where you've come from, from your family, um, all of those and being like, all right, how do I see myself as divine rather than latching onto a deity who might be outside of your culture? And I'm not saying I'm not going to be the one to tell you you can't because God knows there's a lot of deities who are like, I don't care where you're from, but you an effective witch, so we're going to work together. Um, also a whole other discussion. So I find that, again, that root, that foundation of finding yourself within yourself and then start to reflect out is an important step, especially for the path of a witch. And I want to say a few more about red flags. <laughs> Focus in. Uh, we tend to also think, well, if, if we all have a goddess-oriented society, then everything will be peaceful and matriarchy is wonderful. And um, Unfortunately, my experience, and I have experienced a wide selection of folks within paganism and witchcraft and belly dance and such, is some of those folks who really espouse those ideas, uh, who are women, are also abusive in their own way, uh, that, you know, very unhealthy towards even other women. So there's internalized misogyny there. There's no pass. None of this gets a free pass. No, nobody gets out. Nobody gets out alive. But I'd like you to get out as, uh, <laughs> with the least amount of damage as possible. So that's where, it is. keep keep an eye out. Don't think that you're going to throw out one thing and get to the opposite end of it and everything will be healed and better because we're still all human beings. Mm. So take care of yourselves. Take time. Do research. Make your body an altar. Your altar, an altar is a place of action. Quote, The Witch's Altar by Jason Mankey and Laura Tempest-Sakroff. Ah, another book. <laughs> product placement right here. <laughs> so take that time. Consider 
who are you? What do you want to do? Where do you want to focus? And if you are interested in doing magical resistance work, um, that is about bringing back <laughs> rights, whether they're reproductive rights, um, same-sex marriage rights, uh, which are also in danger, trans rights, which are in danger, um, the fact that healthcare can possibly go away, which affects so many disabled people. Uh, there's, there's, it's, it's all connected. <laughs> All of this is connected. And then we weave religion and color and age and all of those other issues into this. So, again, I'm happy if you're just discovering the idea of goddess energy. And I feel like I'd be really silly, like, oh, you must find the goddess within yourself. No, I want you to find the divine within yourself, however you want to call that. Um, but watch for the flags. And... Be the witch, right? Be, be radical, be revolutionary, be kind. And not only on this find yourself, but also see all the folks who can stand with you uh, and that we can do this together. That's one of the bigger things. So thank you for listening to this ramble. There's probably gonna be more soon. Bye.